in the last stream we were working on getting started with the space quest lines getting ourselves a nasa workbench a rocket launch pad and of course our tier one rocket here which we used in the last episode to get to the moon and acquire a staggering amount of moonstone which we then used to acquire dash ingots in order to get the dash ore that we are now generating automatically over here with our tier 10 support frame and the initial plan for today's episode is going to be to kind of do more of the same we need to take the dash that we have in here we need to put that dash into the jumbo furnace because for some reason the jumbo furnace is the only place that you can process this dash or despite the fact that uh, we have all of the thermal expansion and mechanism machines upstairs none of those work you have to do it inside of the jumbo furnace but once we have a decent amount of dash we can then begin to use that dash to get the tier 2 rocket here which really doesn't seem too difficult to make we need to put a bunch of dash into the compressor this guy right here i'll just throw a full stack in there and then give that a quick tip with the time in the bottle to allow us to get a bunch of compressed dash we're then going to use that in the construction of the rocket and other than the compressed dash i don't really think there's much else we need we do need one dash plate weirdly enough and in fact it doesn't look like we need that much uh, compressed dash either looking at the actual recipe most of the recipes here are kind of the same the dash plate can be made in the multi-server press and of course we do have that multi-server press over here we can just do something like this and that's going to get put into the system for us and with that i think we might be pretty much good to go on getting this tier 2 rocket up and running let me quickly bookmark the new rocket in jei and we can also unbookmark basically everything else here now we don't need any of that stuff from the last episode so here we're just going to fill in these slots with the compressed dash we then do need the exact same rocket nose cone that we crafted in the last episode which does use more hellish matter however at this point in time i assume that we're backed up almost fully not quite fully we've got uh, 10 hellish matter which does make me think that we've got a limitation somewhere the limitation looks like it is on ultimate technium and that's on elite technium and there is no limit on elite technium however <laughs> i think this is the problem i don't think that you can import from an item hopper let me quickly check over here oh no i'm just a fool and we don't have a draw for elite technium that is my bad okay fine if i uh, take this out and i go put this into its own draw over here wait did we not have we will have had a draw for the elite technium i wonder where that went if it's not here um we do want to put a downgrade into that draw just like we've done with all of our other uh technium draws as well to make sure that we don't turn everything into uh, elite technium because we do still need some of those lower tiers but uh, if we do this and this that should hopefully start to fill up and should hopefully also begin to uh, to produce more of the ultimate technium over here as well that is working and i think yeah this is also working okay those are being imported fantastic all right so we're gonna get more hellish matter for now though we do have all of the hellish matter required over here in order to make the uh, the nose cone fantastic we'll slap that in the top slot and then on the left and right here the rocket fins are the exact same as they were before the only new things are the two dash tanks which do require some dash ingots one and two and of course the dash engine which again requires an engine fin along with yet another one of these engine frames and of course the uh, dash plate that we just made fantastic and that's kind of everything we can put in the dash tanks we can put in the dash engine we can put in the rocket fins and boom we have a tier two rocket and that is another quest complete and with that we're basically good to head on through to the next planet so can i just um can i pick this up i can there we go and uh, we can throw down the tier two rocket instead just like before we need to fill this up with fuel just like before it does only hold three buckets worth of fuel and so again i still don't think it's really worth getting more oil like we could ultimate oil with the uh, fluid absorber but given how little we need of it i don't think it's really necessary and we still have basically full tanks in the top left there of oxygen and so much like before we now need to head to mars and instead of getting moonstone we need to get mars stone and 
Unfortunately, just like before, we need to get a staggering amount of Marth Stone, about 20,000 Marth Stone in total, if we want to be able to get enough Ostrom ingots to get 36 Ostrom ore that we can then use to get unlimited Ostrom ore going forward. So I think what we're going to do here, just like we did last time, we will uh, take a waystone with us. Uh, this time around, I will quickly craft up some more tech books here, and we'll use those tech books just to purchase some more waystones. Fantastic. I'll just take a regular and a regular. Fantastic. So we'll take those with us. And I think what we're going to want to do here is I think we're going to want to get an ender pouch. The ender pouch is going to allow us to send items back from Mars to the overworld without having to teleport back and forth using the waystone. It's basically an ender chest that you can carry around with you. Now, in order to make it, we do need some kind of leather. And in this pack, we can duplicate leather once we have one using the resource duplicator. But we can also use a drying table and log sheets. We have made those log sheets before. I think that's the recipe that we're intended to use. This is just made with some pressure plates. So if we do something like this, we can make a bunch of those. We can then do something like this to get log sheets. And then if we get a drying rack, which is made with a two string and six sticks, we can then throw that down like so, put in the log sheet. And then if we, of course, use our trusty time in a bottle here, we can hopefully get a decent amount of leather very quickly, at which point making an ender pouch is hopefully gonna be a piece of cake. Nice. We then probably do want to get another ender chest here. Again, thankfully easy enough. Of course, we do also want to get some diamonds so we can uh, customize this. And let's also get, do we have any red dye left from last episode? I think we should have some beets left over in here. We totally do, nice. So what I'm thinking is we can probably set this up in such a way that we kind of pump all of the moonstone directly into one of these drawers. The way we're gonna do that is with another laser node. Uh, of course, I can't craft in there. I have to craft in here. I'm going to put that laser node down, let's say, right about here. I'm then going to put our new ender chest directly above that, like so. We're going to right-click the nose, like that, and we'll set this to, let's say, red, red, red. And then I think we can just shift-click onto the ender chest to set this to the same frequency. We can. And then now this should be linked to the ender chest. Nice. So now anything that gets put into the ender pouch here makes its way into the ender chest. Pretty cool stuff. And that also carries over the uh, the diamond frequency as well, which is, uh, is very useful. You'll see in the top right, it does say gaming on caffeine there. So you put it on the chest first, then shift right click. All we're going to do is get uh, two more item cards, one to extract and one to insert. And we're gonna use those. Oh, are we out of gold? We are out of gold, which is maybe not to be unexpected. I probably should have put a storage downgrade into the netherite crafter because in the last episode, I did have to turn this setup over here back on because we weren't making netherite actively because a few episodes ago, we turned this off to save on gold, but uh, now we're out of gold again, which is not ideal. Where is my gold being made? It's here. We do have netherite capstones on there. So the gold is being made pretty quickly. We're just using it way faster than we're producing it. I think again, for the time being, we can probably turn this off like that. And we should start to back up on gold again very quickly. I think um, the trouble that we have right now is just that we have a, a storage upgrade in the netherite drawer here that's gonna hold just a staggering amount of netherite blocks. And so for a long time, we're not gonna have any gold. The good news is that uh, as soon as we turn the exporting of gold off, we, uh, we do start to back up on gold quite quickly. So anyway, over here, let's go extract. We're gonna extract from the top and we're gonna insert into the bottom. So into the downside like that. Perfect. And essentially my plan is to go to the moon, start mining moonstone. Last episode, we used our time in a bottle to get a ton of moonstone because we can do the same with Mars stone. We could bring Mars stone back. We could then set up a miner for Mars stone and use that to try and get 20,000 Mars stone. But as we saw in the last episode, it's gonna take hours and hours and hours out of our time in a bottle to do it in a reasonable period of time. And I think instead, just using the atomic disassembler to tear down a ton of of Mars stone at once is probably gonna be a quick way of doing it, especially when we can kind of dump the entire inventory back into the ender chest and clear it out without having to teleport back and forth over and over and over again. So let's clear out our inventory, uh, basically of everything. Did I put the right cards in here? I think I did, perfect. 
And all we're gonna take with us really is just the waystones. Cool. So over here, I think we're good to go. I'm pretty sure we can hit launch. And just like before, we're gonna slowly but surely head on up to the atmosphere, which will take a couple of seconds here. We can press F5 to get more of a, a third person view of our very shaky rocket ship that we have here. And once we get to the solar system, we can hit Sun, and we can hit Mars, and we can hit Mars. Just like before, you want to be ready to hit Spacebar here, so that we don't crash land into the surface of Mars. Again, just like before, you do want to make, like, you can kind of be a little bit aggressive with it. You want to um, ideally get somewhat close to the ground, but not too close before you start slowing down, because otherwise you will crash into it. But if you do it right, you should get a nice, soft landing. Cool. And then once we're out, we can, uh, of course, once again, throw down our waystone. Let me quickly uh, right-click on here. By right-click, I mean shift right-click to take the rocket out. And uh, we like to carry that with us. But then uh, we'll go ahead and put our waystone down over here. Done. And just like before, let me quickly take like at least, uh, this is not Moonstone, I keep forgetting, this is Moon at Sand. We need some Mars Stone, which is probably gonna be a bit further away, just like last time. Although now that we have our Atomic Disassembler, I think we can probably, can I Ultimine with this? I totally can. If I set this to Mining Tunnel, it's going to do a bit of a zigzag here for me, which I think is going to be ideal because it's going to get us down to the, the Moonstone just that bit faster. So here's Moonstone. We can go ahead and harvest a stack of the stuff. And then if we head back to Earth, so we'll go to uh, Laser Hell, what we should be able to do is we should be able to head on over to our draw, drop the Moonstone in here, and then real quick, if we grab a couple of overclocking cards, we can put those into the extraction side of this equation. So in the top side, we'll say extract a stack every tick. And that's just gonna move all of the milestone down very quickly. And then the final thing we want to do is put a draw upgrade into this draw so that it can hold more than the default 2048 because of course we need uh, 20,000 milestone in there for this to work. And so now we're gonna go through and uh, kind of complete the somewhat tedious task of setting this back to regular Ultimine which is uh, shapeless, and then we can just mine a bunch of Moonstone like this, thankfully somewhat quickly, given how fast the Atomic Disassembler breaks things, and then once we've got like an inventory full of Moonstone, we're just gonna throw that into the Ender Pouch like this, that's then gonna get extracted, it's not gonna extract anything other than Moonstone, and I'm hoping that this is gonna be a faster way of us getting what we're after. There does seem to be a limit on how fast this is uh, refilling the Atomic Disassembler. I think that is due to a limit on our setup. If we go back over here, I believe if we open up our flux controller, right now, if I click uh, bypass limit, I think that's going to allow it to go faster than the 800,000 redstone flux per tick that it currently uh, can transfer at. We'll see if that is the case, if we go back to Mars bars. Does this work faster? It still tears through the power real quick, but it definitely does look like it is, yeah, definitely charging faster than it was a second ago. And so hopefully this is um, good enough. All right, so way too much Ultra Mine mining later. We now have 21,200 moon stone. And now it's just a case of doing the exact same thing we did last time. Here we can go ahead and take out all of the, uh, the dash that is in here. Fantastic. I did have to uh, smelt up some more dash to get the experience to go back and forth um, at least one more time. But uh, now we can take all of the Moonstone out and we can start processing it through here. I think we should probably just swap this out for this, like that. And then we want to put in our cards again, right? So in, yeah, no, this is correct, I think. So in the up section is where we want the item extract card. That's going to extract the dash. Uh, oh, sorry, not the dash. What are we making now? We're making Ostrom. 
on the downside. That's where we're going to insert the Ostrom once it's done. And then I did have an extra extract card. That's where it was from. My extra, it's called an item card, is this one here. And that is going in on this side, the south side. So that should extract the uh, milestone, stick it into the Jumbo Furnace. The Jumbo Furnace is going to smelt it, and then it's going to put the uh, Ostrom down into here. And then we have to repeat the same setup again. We just take all of the Ostrom. We use all of that Ostrom to make Ostrom Ore, which I think is just the same process. So Ostrom Ore, yep, it's just milestone with Ostrom ingots. We need 36 of those. Uh, let's make sure we've got, uh, yeah, we've got a few extra milestone stacks in our inventory, so that's fine. And then once we've got that, we make the same parts again so another rocket cone we make another set of rocket fins we make ostrom tanks and an ostrom engine again it's all the same stuff again and then that will get as a tier three rocket which we can then use to fly to venus it looks like the only other thing we need to do is upgrade our space helmet to a netherite space helmet and our space suit i guess in general to uh, a netherite space suit to do that we are going to need to get a smithing table which should be pretty straightforward yep the recipe has not been changed and of course, we do have loads of netherite. And so if we just take all of this off, we can place our smithing table down somewhere over here. In fact, you know what? Let's put this down in the corner. And then we can do one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these. Nice. So uh, we'll get the quest complete for that as soon as we unlock the tier three rocket. And then from there, we fly to Venus. We mine 20,000 Venus stone. We're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to move uh, this draw right here over to here. And we'll use this one for Venus stone instead of moonstone. And then, you know, we smelt the Venus stone. We get the Callowite nuggets. We make Callowite ingots. We use that to make Callowite ore. And then we get the Callowite ore into a miner. And we should be good to go. We do have a decent number of elite mob essence up here. We've got 411. We're going to need thousands of this stuff, so we are still going to have to look at uh, increasing the number of essence stations that we have to make this much faster. But the elite mob essence we do have should make it pretty easy for us to get all of the required tier 10 support frames in order to automate the mining of dash ore, ostrom ore, and calorite ore. The only thing that's going to be a little tricky after that is like setting up another jumbo furnace. We'll probably move this one. Because we, uh, we do have to use the Jumbo Furnace to automate the smelting of Dash, Calorite, and Ostrom. So all of that is also something we're going to have to do. For now, though, we can get rid of this. We can put you in the system. You're not Moonstone. You're Moonstone. We can then do something like this. And we can start getting our Ostrom ore. And yeah, we just now need to wait for this to finish. Set up the miner. And then do the same again for Calorite. And not too long later, boom, we have the Tier 3 rocket. Again, it's basically the same as the previous two rockets, it looks a lot cooler from the outside here, but does require three buckets of fuel, just like before. And uh, you guessed it, over here I put some more hellish technium into the magma crucible, so that has made some more crude oil for us. We don't need oil though, we need refined fuel. Again, you can't shift like that in apparently, because that puts it in the wrong slot. That's fine. Uh, do we have one more bucket? We don't. That's fine, we can make uh, one more bucket. Boom, and boom, fantastic. And then we can drop all three of those buckets into our rocket. One slight problem we're running into is uh, having enough XP to get back and forth from the moon. Getting back is easy enough because we can use the uh, slash skyblock home command, which brings us back to our island. But uh, getting there, we, uh, we don't have enough XP, and it's real slow trying to get XP with the jumbo furnace. One thing we can do is we could head back to the research section, and we can look at unlocking the tempad right here. What do we need for the tempad book? We need four waystones, and that's kind of it. That is fine. We've got 23 tech books. We can use those to purchase another set of two waystones, which we can do uh, like that. I'm hopeful that it doesn't matter if the waystones are mossy. I don't think it does, although it might. <laughs> that would be a bit of a pain if it was. Let's get two more regular waystones. Can I use my mossy one? I can't. It has to be standard waystones. That's unfortunate. Either way, now that we have those, we can go back to Elite Research. We can hand that in, and then we need eight tech books. And now we can purchase, or we can uh, craft, I guess, the Tempad. So the Tempad quest needs a redstone lamp, which is easy enough. It does also require a beacon, which is quite pricey, but of course is something we can do. And the Tempad is kind of similar to the waystones, but without the need for experience. So we can right-click on it. We can click Run Program, New Location, call this Home, Add Location. And now if we go to Venus, 
we can then do the same thing on Venus, and we can just teleport between those two locations without the need for experience, or without the need to spend experience. So, yeah, I've moved another draw over here, as we saw earlier. So now we're going to put our Venus stone in here. We're going to get 20,000, just like we did before, and run through the same setup again. And so in here, let's hit space. Let's head on up to the solar system again. Again, once we're here, we go Sun, we go Venus, and we go Venus. And then we just slowly descend down onto Venus, holding space to make sure we don't uh, crash land. Uh, F5 makes it a little easier to see what's going on here. It does kind of just get faster and faster and faster, and so it can sneak up on you if you're not careful. Like, you can crash into the ground pretty quickly if you're going at full speed, because you don't go to constant speed. You start falling real quick. This one does at least have some kind of um, structure on the, on the planet. Um... For our purposes, it is mostly just a um, a different colored version of the moon. I think these are going to be full of like, ooh, I was going to say villagers, but it looks like they're full of hostile enemies. They're not attacking me. I think that's because we're on peaceful, so they might not attack at all. I do wonder, though, if there is like any, um, oh, no, you will attack me, eh? Oh, 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 okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I um I did not think they would attack me. I was uh, wondering if they had like any all that we could steal. Unfortunately, it looks like these chests are oh hello. I don't know what the heck you are. Yeah, these are all empty, which is unfortunate. I was hopeful that we could maybe steal some um some of the uh calorite ingots potentially from from those guys. Um I also don't know where I landed now. Not that it really matters too too much. We can make another rocket if we needed to. Either way, over here. We can, uh, again, right click with the tempad, run program. This time we're going to go new location, uh, Venus. We'll put I'm your Venus and then add location. And now if we uh, take a Venus stone like this, we can then just right click, run program, and then just select home and teleport. It opens a little portal that we can run through. And then back over at home, we can then add our Venus stone over here. And then, yeah, we need to do the same thing again now. So... Annoyingly, the only downside with the temp head is you do have to wait. There's a three-minute cooldown on using it, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> um, but once that three minutes is up, we're going to head back through to Venus. Once we get to Venus, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to keep depositing uh, stacks and stacks of Venus stone through the ender pouch into this chest here, uh, the storage drawer. And once we get to 20,000, we can then smelt it all down using the same system we have down here until we have enough of the calorite ore. I'm going to replace the moonstone here with calorite ore. And thankfully, we do have enough of the nether stars to actually make more of the tier 10 support frame. So we've already got 27. And in fact, 27 is uh, all we need for the next miner. We can just go ahead and use our exchanging gadget to exchange all of these. And then, like I said, put the Callaway all there. Um, and also, one thing I will do here whilst we're waiting is upgrade to the tier 7 cobblestone miner. We've got, of course, a bunch of 6x compressed cobble in here. We can go ahead and craft that down into 7x compressed cobble. We do need a little bit more. Fantastic. And then we can throw this down. And because we went with the higher tier support frame last time, uh, we should be good for, I think, 7x and 8x. And then I think it's only once we get up to 9x that we need the tier 10 support frame. And again, because we built it so close to our other tier 10 support frames, it's not going to cost anywhere near as much support frame to upgrade this one either. Uh, once again, we're going to have to move this draw, add it to the draw graveyard. We could empty these out, but the draws are cheap enough and we've got so many of them that we can just take them and uh, throw down a new one boom and that is going to continue the same system we had before i feel like we might as well replace some of these ruby blocks here with netherite blocks and i know for a fact we need sand quite fast so i feel like we might as well replace these ones as well just to make sure everything here is running nice and quick and yeah, once we get to enough 7x compressed cobblestone, we can upgrade it to 8x. And then from there, we've got the, uh, the 9x ready to go. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to wait 56 seconds, and then we're going to go get 20,000 Venus stone. And again, there we go. There's our 21,600 Venus stone. Let's get that processed, and let's get the Calorite ingots made, and the Calorite ore placed down in place of the Moonstone. We do need to complete these quests for the uh, armor here. I think just taking this off should complete the quest. It does indeed. And then Venus stone, quest complete. And then everything's complete. We could make the TFR rocket to travel to other planets, but I really don't think there's much point. We could do it for the sake of exploration, but I think a lot of the other planets are kind of just different colored variants of the planets that we've seen. And I don't think there's much point in doing that. We could craft the rocket for the sake of quest completion, which I might do just to get the... Uh, 
the green tick on this quest line. But once we've got enough of these Calorite ingots here to make the Calorite ore to upgrade the miner, we can then focus our efforts on alternating that with the Jumbo Furnace and looking at automating the production of the Voided Technium. And at that point, as we mentioned before, I think our limiting factor is going to be Nether Stars. Hopefully, now we are starting to get more Hellish Technium. Yeah, that's backing up quite nicely uh, due to the increase in the amount of Ultimate Technium that we're getting now that we're actually getting Ultimate Technium because this is working as intended. So uh, it looks like Electrum Gears are our current bottleneck and maybe also Lava Bottles could be a bottleneck as well. The bottleneck there is probably, once again, just sand production. A lot of our sand is being used in the making of soul sand over on that side. It takes so much sand to make soul sand. And so there's a couple of things that we could definitely do with looking at. We could do with increasing the speed of these machines, which of course we can do with these integral components. Let me request a bunch of those. I guess 20 is too many due to our bite limitation, but 10 will do the trick. Uh, we can upgrade these to make these faster and get those Electrum Gears faster. And then... It's really just a case, I guess, of putting down more sand miners to get sand faster. We could double it up with beacons, but um, even at twice the speed it's currently at, I don't think that would be enough. So we might just have to set up another sand miner and then maybe stick beacons on that one, potentially. All right. And again, not too long later, we now have our miner over here with the calorite ore being produced with the netherite blocks, of course, to make it nice and fast. I've also moved the jumbo furnace over to the center and I've placed down another sand miner here that's connected up with the link cable so that hopefully we're going to make things like glass and soul sand just that little bit faster. And if needs be, we can always put more of them down on the right hand side as well. So now we need to get these ores through the jumbo furnace. So what I think I'm going to do is just grab a few more laser nodes here and just use laser IO to make it a little easier for us to transfer these items to the jumbo furnace. We could set up a similar system to upstairs with the conveyor belts, but then we'd have to have another buffer chest and it seems a little unnecessary given that uh, we already have all of this stuff so close and all we need to do is kind of link these laser nodes together like this and then just put in three extract cards and one insert card and that should kind of do the trick, I think. Let's set these back to channel zero and channel zero that's not channel zero that's channel two there we go and so we're gonna have three extract cards the extract cards are gonna go in the bottom here and here and here and then over here we're just gonna put the insert card in that should hopefully start receiving the items if these are set correctly this one does have the overclockers in which are not really necessary uh, we might put some overclockers into some of the cards to make them a bit faster, to move more than one item at a time. But ideally... Oh, it helps if you put this into the um, the right fist. Yeah, it needs to go into the bottom side, not the east side, Isaac, you fool. There we go. That's going to start filling up. And then from there, we do need to export some coal to the bottom. Uh, thankfully, coal is accessible by the system, and so a regular export cable from Simple Storage Network will do the trick. And we're also going to use an import cable as well from the Simple Storage Network to pull everything in here. So... If we do this, we can potentially get rid of this. Uh, that is going to import the final product. We'll use an export cable there to export the coal blocks. And then if we just do something like this, we should be pretty much good to go. I'm fairly certain that we should be able to export coal blocks like this to the bottom section. We totally can. Uh, the coal blocks, we could speed it up, but I think that's fine. And then we are going to have to set up dedicated drawers for the ores here, but... That should also be fine. These are going to come in and then we're just going to take them out and give them their own drawers. We do want to make sure that we give them compacting drawers because, of course, the uh, the thing that we actually need is the block version of all of these. So we want to get one, two, uh, ideally three compacting drawers. That needs two more. Uh, that needs two more pistons. And boom, we can upgrade all of those to frame compacting drawers as per usual. And then potentially for the last time here, chat, we need to get uh, some more smooth stone along with some more dark oak i was uh, thinking we might have been out of dark oak but thankfully we do have just enough here and then we can go and put these down one two and three i probably should have put those down locked just to make sure we don't get anything else rogue in there but uh, we'll throw you down like that that should start getting more of the calorite from the miner down here and then we could do the same thing with the other ores as they come in um we do of course want to make sure we put our uh, 64 jumbo furnaces into the jumbo furnace to allow it to smelt a lot more than one ingot at a time and then we can do the same thing with uh, the dash and the ostrom here we can drop those into their own respective storage drawers here and here 
And now I think we're pretty much good to go on setting up the automation for the voided Technium ingot. We do want to upgrade this ultimate crafting table here with four regular hoppers. And just like with everything else, we're gonna go ahead and set this up over here. So we have got this uh, three blocks in on this side. So we're gonna put it right about there. We're gonna have yet another, this case a hopper should do the trick just fine. I would like it to be slightly faster than a wooden hopper. So we'll do this and we'll do this. And then we'll get, of course, another draw controller. We'll put that down right about here. And we just need to export the items required into the two by two drawers that are gonna go down here and not here. Well, yes, here, but not network cable. There we go, fantastic. Uh, we'll lock that as well. And we just need to grab the required items. So we need blocks of Ostrom, blocks of Dash, and blocks of Calorate. Those all need to be exported over to here. Speaking of which, we do have quite a few export cables in our inventory. Let's do uh, this. And of course, we'll hook that up in just a second. Uh, but let's put in you, you, and not you, you. Fantastic. And then let's make sure each of those has their own draw slot. We also need to export nether stars. Like that. And we'll put you in the export as well. Fantastic. And the only other thing needed after that, I think, is just the hellish technium. Yeah, that's all that we need. Hellish technium needs its own draw as well. Fantastic. And we'll put you in like that. We will make sure, as per usual, that these both have downgrades as well. Boom, boom. Oh, that one's already got a downgrade, I guess. Perfect. And then it's just a case of putting this in. So let me quickly hook that up to the pre-existing system. Oh, this is set to off. By the way, if you shift and scroll, you'll see in the bottom left there, you can go off, fast, slow, and normal. Uh, we want it set to fast so it breaks as quickly as possible, but you can change the speed on this if you don't like it uh, being super fast, and you can also uh, turn it off if for some reason you wanted it to not do anything. But uh, if we do something like that, we should start to see these fill up with the items that are being exported. And as per usual, if we get maybe uh, some speed and stack upgrades, we can maybe make this just that little bit faster. Not that it necessarily needs to be, I think once the initial buffer fills up, it should be good to go, but I am a little impatient. And so if we go ahead and do something like this and this, these should fill up nice and quick, fantastic. And we can start making this happen. So in here, we want to turn off the output. We want to place the nether stars around the center where we're gonna put the hellish matter. We then do need quite a few of all of these uh, blocks here. We also need at least four nether stars. So I'll take three more of those. Those are gonna go here, here, and here. And then for the actual recipe, let me uh, bookmark the voided technium here. We need four Ostrom, and then we need eight Dash and eight Calorite. Surprisingly less Ostrom required than Calorite. I would have thought that Calorite would have been the, uh, the item we needed the most of, but apparently not. That's fine, so we'll take all of you, and then it's four Ostrom, not like that, like this, <laughs> with uh, eight Dash, which is gonna go in like this, and then we need eight Calorite that's gonna go in like this. Annoyingly, we don't actually have enough Calorite just yet. That could be though, due to just like a, we, we could actually just not have enough at the minute because it, it does take a lot of ore to make it. No, we do have enough. There's probably just not enough space in here. It looks like surprisingly, it is overclockers that we need. The speed is just not, we're not extracting them fast enough. So if I put, uh, we'll start over here because Calorite is what we need. But uh, if I put an overclocker into here, I'm gonna go with just the one overclocker for now. 16 might be enough. And then we'll do the same with the other guys. We'll put one overclocker in here. That's already set to the right number. And then we'll do the same in here as well. We'll put in one overclocker and make that faster. It's still not quite fast enough, but it's almost fast enough. I think it's probably fine because, uh, and the reason I say it's fine is that you'll see that we're actually out of ores now. So <laughs> even though it's not fast enough to fill up the drawers, um, it's, gonna be fast enough because we're actually just not making the uh the ores that quick do we have enough of the final ore though is the question and uh, the way we're gonna figure it out is over here we have got nine more we do perfect so let's do this take these extra ones out and that is good to go if we uh, shift left click and then left click that is all set up it's gonna start pulling all the items in fantastic if we turn the auto crafting toggle on it's gonna make the first voided technium for us. As per usual, I'm gonna put in a couple of blocks of brick bordered smooth stone just so we don't back up too much 
on this and of course we do want to make sure we put in yet another draw downgrade into this draw right here and boom look at that we've done it and we can make our first of the mod mastery papers uh, before i do that i am going to lock yes this draw to this so we don't end up with brick boarded smooth stone in that draw fantastic but uh, let's do something like this boom and boom that's another quest line complete fantastic and speaking of completing quest lines we don't need to do it as i mentioned before but we can go ahead and take a little bit more of the calorite here it's not going to take that much of it i don't think and uh, we can use this to make that next tier of rocket we need six of the ingots which we can make a bit faster by ingots i do mean the uh, compressed plates here and other than that we just need like the nose cone and stuff right tier four rocket let me bookmark this let's unbookmark the tier three rocket and the voided technium that's already all set up and good to go we've not set up the exporting of nether stars yet that is something that needs to be done if we're going to fully automate the process but as i mentioned earlier if we are going to fully automate the process we do also need to get um nether stars coming in faster we need more of that elite essence being made as well uh, we do also need three hellish technium one two three that should get us the next nose cone and then we just need to get two more of these tanks one and two along with one of these engines i'm going to take these out because otherwise they're going to get exported when they go back into the system uh, that requires our fourth engine frame and our fourth engine fan of the playthrough and then uh, we should one more dash plate a eh? that is completely fine we have the dash ingots and we have the multi server press drop you in there and then back over here we should have what it takes to make that tier four engine fantastic and with that chat, I think we're good to go in terms of making yet another rocket. Again, not a rocket that's required, but should be bigger than tier three. It is, they keep getting taller. It's another chapter complete, another free tech book. And we're now onto the final Technium quest line. And we're kind of onto just the challenge quests in general. So we now need to make 16 of every single one of these books because the final quest here is to make 16 final technium and each final technium requires this craft we have to do this craft 16 times and so we need a bunch of basic technium we need a bunch of advanced technium a bunch of elite a bunch of ultimate a little bit of hellish and a tiny bit of voided we're going to need a lot more voided for all of the books because all the books need mod mastery papers and all the mod mastery papers require voided technium so we are going to need quite a bit of that to make this happen but I don't think it should be too bad. Some of these are definitely more difficult than others, but some of them are not too bad. For example, the Flux Networks one here looks pretty straightforward. The Flux Network Mod Mastery book requires eight Flux blocks. Flux Dust, we can make an almost infinite amount of because we've got so much redstone and so much obsidian. We've got an infinite amount of both of those, really. And then we do have so many Eyes of Ender now. The trickiest bit is going to just be the Blaze Powder, I guess, but... Again, we can make so many of these redstone flux coils now. We have so much gold, we have so much redstone, and it's just a case of pulverizing those into blaze powder, right? And uh, to be fair, I think I could probably just add them to the extraction whitelist on this side. Like, if I put those there, I can then throw these in like that, and we can just back them up, and they're going to get pulverized into blaze powder. And then uh, we do have a draw for blaze powder over here and so we should start seeing that blaze powder backing up uh, if we crunch some numbers real quick if we wanted to make 16 of these that means that we have to do uh, 16 multiplied by 8 which is 128 so we need 128 flux blocks each flux block requires four flux cores so we need 128 eyes of ender which is just 128 blaze powder it's really not that bad uh, the only thing that's gonna make it a little tricky is that right now our obsidian is not currently hooked up to the a2 system it's only hooked up to the simple storage network and so we are going to have to kind of just grab some and dump it in the system but once it's been dumped i think we're kind of just good to go the, the thing we're not gonna be able to do is make 16 of the books just yet because of the fact that we don't have 16 of these um, mod mastery papers but in terms of making 128 eyes of ender that's done and then from there making 128 lots of these flux cores should also be fine just using kind of all of the eyes of ender that we have to make all of the flux cores and then using all of the flux cores to try and make um, 128 of those uh, flux blocks can we make that happen not quite we're missing a little bit of flux dust but as i mentioned earlier that flux dust is fine and if we try that one more time boom we've got 128 flux blocks which is enough to make 16 books and so 
like I said, some of these definitely going to be easier than others. We can do this and we can take our, uh, you know, mod mastery paper and uh, put that in the middle. Did we get one as a reward? Is that what uh, what happened there? We do seem to have two of them. Oh, we totally did. Nice. That's uh, very nice of Ben. But uh, look at that. Boom. Quest complete. And as a reward, we get a single tech book. And so next time, chat, we can uh, we can come back and we can start looking at, uh, at setting this up. So some of them are easy enough, like the, um, the 9x compressed cobblestone should also be fairly straightforward. Over here, we have got 2048 7x cobblestone. People do make a good point in that um, we can probably, if we take all of the 7x compressed cobblestone, is that enough to just go straight to 9x? I actually don't know how much 7x you need to make one 9x, but uh, if we take all of this out, or at least a large amount of it out, and just throw it in the system, we can start compressing this down to the 8x. And of course, we could set up a minor for 8x to get more 8x, but if we have enough 7x to make all of the 8x, and then even go further to make the 9x, we might just be able to do that and kind of skip straight to the end. I'm not sure we're actually going to have enough. Yeah, not quite. It's very close. We've got uh, enough to make 25 9x. So we are going to have to downcraft some of that, but it's real close. And uh, especially with the time in a bottle, we, uh, we can probably make that 9x very quickly here. If we take the uh, 42 8x, we can throw this down. Uh, do I have a wand in here? I don't. Thankfully, we should be able to make uh, potentially an infinity wand now, whether we have uh, nether stars. The infinity wand has just infinite durability. It's not going to break on us, which is nice. And then we'll do this and this. And of course, if we wanted to, we've got uh, almost four hours again in our time in a bottle. So we could do something like that to uh, hopefully, uh, oh, of course, I do it every time. Let me unlock that. There we go. To actually get the thing that we're trying to uh, to get on an accelerated time frame. And we can start taking that, of course, and crafting it down into 9x. And as soon as we have 36 and 9x, we can then use that to get the 9x up and running. And then we only need another 128 of the 9x, because once we have that, we can then um, make all of the books we need, right? We need 16 lots of 8x, which, uh, as we saw earlier, is 128. We are going to have to upgrade, of course. This is such a dark block. <laughs> it's so black. But uh, we are going to have to upgrade to the uh, tier 10 support frame. We do have a little bit of support frame left, not quite enough to get us all the way there, but we do still have yet more nether stars that we can craft into yet more support frame. And using our exchanging gadget, we can continue to uh, swap out these other support frames for the tier 10 support frame. And it looks like we're going to be a little shy. I think we're going to be two off here. Yeah, we've got two left and we need to do two more. That is fine. Tier 10 support frame. Hit me with one more beacon and one more bench of support frame. Perfect. Boom, boom. And then let's just go ahead and unlock this and take out all of the uh, 8x compressed cobble. And that should start getting, I think, 9x compressed cobble. What is the issue here? Uh, the structure. Did I not transfer? Oh, no, I missed one right here, of course. Boom. And there we go. The compressed cobble 9x is coming in. This is millions of cobblestone being produced for us and getting the compressor mod book is going to be super easy. That's not going to be a problem. Mechanism doesn't seem too bad. Uh, for mechanism, we need to make a bunch of these quantum entangler porters, which atomic alloys we're making automatically. Refined obsidian ingots we can make with our osmium compressor. We've made those before. The teleportation cores are just more atomic alloys. Uh, we've got tons of lapis, gold, and diamonds. And so, yeah, I really don't think that's going to be a problem for us. Um, essence is going to be tricky. We do still need to increase our essence production if we're going to get um, just even the voided technium, right? Um, in order to make all of this happen, we need to get 16 of each book. There are 10 books, so we need 160 books. Each book requires a voided technium, and so we are going to have to get at least 160 voided technium to make that work. Right now, we have zero voided technium because we just don't have uh, the nether stars being automatically sent. Of course, we could put those in like this. Let me make sure I do keep one of those, though, Isaac, because otherwise we're not going to be able to duplicate it, although that's not true, actually, right? We've got one in here. We do, okay, and that one doesn't count. Perfect. Uh, how are we doing on elite mob essence? 125, so we can make like 12 more nether stars, which is okay, but again, if we're going to need 160 voided technium, that means that we need 160 times 4, which is 640 nether stars, which is 6,400 elite mob essence, if we're going to um, to complete that. So, yeah, it's not ideal. Also, we need to put a link cable down on the bottom of the, uh, the hellish matter as well. So we're down here, something we've not done previously, but uh, if we do this and this, that should give the simple storage system uh, the ability to export over to here, does indeed, perfect, and that's gonna start making more voided technium for us. So um, that's fine. Digital storage here is gonna be a tricky one. We have to make 
eight 256 kme storage components which is just a case of teaching our system how to craft a lot of stuff to make all of those components again we have to do that 16 times so we need so many of these 256k storage components um, i'm hopeful we have enough resources for that the tech books one we need 128 tech books 16 times which is a lot of tech books but i think we can do it um, especially with uh, the voided or the hellish mm, technium we might have to come back and do some uh, some tweaks to our processes like we have to make things faster if we're going to make that happen uh because we just might not have enough technium to make that work but shouldn't be too difficult to get there in the end beyond earth wants us to get uh, four blocks of callaway and then four rovers the rovers seem easy enough uh, we did some slime some steel some black dye some other stuff here but none of that seems too difficult making uh, you know 16 lots of four 64 rovers should be fine thermal expansion we've kind of mostly done this we need to uh, just request that we get uh, 16 lots of six resident integral components and then immersive engineering is a bit of a weird one. We've got to make this um, phenolic resin, phenolic resin, maybe. Uh, we've got to make uh, 16 buckets of that and uh, use a bottling machine to make the book. And then for that, we need a refinery, which is a multi-block structure, which is doable. We need creosote oil, which we, of course, get from our coke oven or our pyrolyzer, along with this liquid right here, which we get from the refinery with silver plates and ethanol. It's a bit of an involved process with a couple of multi-blocks, but it does seem fairly doable. And so, yeah, next time we'll come back, I don't know if it's going to be doable in one episode to get all of these, but I think it might be doable, potentially. But uh, we'll find out. Next time we'll come back, we will uh, start working on crafting these up. I do think that what I might do between streams is look at duplicating this setup here. So we've got this making the Elite Essence for us, but right now it's really our limiting factor. We need so much more of it. Uh, we're also limited on Hellish Technium, which, again, is a limitation on ultimate technium i think that's still potentially a problem back here with the speed of electron being made thankfully we did request those resonant integral components and so uh, we can do something like this and like this to make these faster and we might even still have some flux and gajamilifiers we don't but we can request some never mind we didn't teach our system how to make uh, the flux coils interesting they are easy enough to make we probably should teach our system how to make them just so it can fully craft the uh, flux and gajamilifiers in the future uh, for now though we can start making some of this stuff faster because again yeah the uh, electrum gears is our limiting factor after that it's still the bottles and so yeah we might have to just get even more sand production going because glass is the limiting factor we can swap this out for a resonant integral component but it's not going to do anything unless we have enough sand to make that happen and right now all of our sand is being used over here to make soul sand yeah, um, we've got downgrades on all of this stuff, but it's just so much sand is required to make the soul sand that we have. Uh, we do have soul sand there, and we are going to start backing up on it in here. One thing we should do is uh, maybe look at putting some stone in here so that we can hopefully start to back up sooner rather than later. Um, we could also potentially look at getting a dedicated uh, sand miner for the glass here. That might be necessary. But again, it's going to kind of be a bit of a game of whack-a-mole, just finding out what is the current bottleneck and making whatever machine or system needs to be faster faster in order to keep the uh, the production of the ultimate technium going as fast as possible right chat is right we could potentially set the priority on this to a lower number if we set it to negative five the sand should go here first we've had a little bit of um, a problem in the past with utilizing negative numbers oh that's the wrong one we need to uh, set the bottom to a higher number it does look like it's not connected but that was the case before as well it might be the case that it's actually not connected let me quickly go and tweak this over here this one i assume is receiving sand it is if i set this to like priority five that should get sand last if this is working correctly but i think that this isn't working correctly i think we need to kind of just quickly replace this um export cable and set it to sand again that still doesn't seem to be working for whatever reason we're still sending the sand over here first despite the priority being higher on the other setup not quite sure why that is but anyway between streams i'll look at uh, increasing our sand production we can uh, potentially spare some beacons to make this faster and we can always put down more sand miners to hopefully just brute force it and uh, produce enough sand to, to saturate both setups and uh, make that ultimate technium faster. Like I said, I think between streams, I will look at uh, duplicating this setup to uh, really start to produce a lot 
of Elite Mob Essence. And then once we have enough Elite Mob Essence and enough Hellish Technium being made, which is kind of the whole point of why we need the more Send, that's going to make enough Voided Technium for us so we can start focusing on the Mod Mastery books and look towards getting the 16 final Technium. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.